Guys, gals, welcome to the vlog again. We are still self-quarantining ourselves out here in Wyoming. This is our fourth day up here. Oh, as you can see, I'm in a new location. Still some badlands as, well, that's mostly what Wyoming is. But it's a great place to go and hide out because there's not a lot of people here. Lowest population in the United States. Hell yeah. So today I'm going to go over some basic off-road kit you should carry. Things like jacks, like recovery equipment, first aid, tools, and the such. I think these are some very vital piece of equipment you should carry if you're going to go anywhere off-road that's away from other people. If you're traveling solo a lot like I do with my family, uh, besides the basics of hopefully you have a winch or at least a shovel and a jack, we're going to go over uh, these other items I carry around. I've been uh, four-wheeling for like 20 years. I used to carry so much crap, so much crap, that uh, it took up most of the the load in my vehicle. I just, I don't do that anymore. I've kind of, over the years, learned what I need and what I don't need. The things that are a waste of time, the things that might be good to have. So we'll go over those. So stay all right, tuned. So I bought these bags to hold all my stuff in. I'll go through each one of these bags. I basically have tools, safety, emergency, and first aid. I've got a recovery equipment bag, and I've got a tire repair and air compressor bag and then this one's kind of a catch-all tools and spares so we'll go through those bags i also carry this little like grill thing that you can set right over your fire and cook food not really an emergency item which is easier to keep in my truck since we do like camping i also bought these uh, arb tread pros i have not yet used them i've had them for a few months keep a flat nose shovel on board. Uh, another bag of survival equipment right here. Probably not much in there right now. Fire extinguisher. And then just a nice small lightweight axe. Good for chopping wood should you need to. So we'll just go through each one of these bags, kind of show the equipment that I'm carrying along inside each bag and we'll go through the purposes of why we carry it, what it is, and how we use it should we need to. Uh, excuse the wind, we are still in Wyoming and it is the land of wind. So we'll get through, we'll start in our, our bag of tools and spares and see what's in there. I need to remind myself anyway of what's in there. I don't remember. I packed it uh, a few months ago. Another great thing about these bags, uh, these are real strong canvas bags I found on Amazon. They were like eight bucks a piece, but they've been holding up really well. And I got four of them to hold all this stuff in. It's really nice to have your stuff categorized and organized and kind of separated from all your other stuff. I do have a giant uh, toolbox back there that's just like a, a chest type toolbox that just hides out underneath my tonneau cover. And it holds all this stuff in there pretty easily. Uh, I've got room for more if I really ever wanted to carry more. I'm pretty happy with what I've got. So we'll go through what we got here and all right we're gonna go through this bag first this uh tools and spares bag just in here these bags are super nice they're zippered they became pretty strong so the first thing i've got in here i got this for christmas present one here it's just a little saw it's good for cutting wood i haven't hardly used it maybe a few times but it's handy to have in case you get stuck somewhere you need to cut up some wood always important to carry jumper cables in case you need them or one of your buddies does. You just never know when you might leave your battery or your truck on overnight and kill the battery. Um, I carry just some, some rope just in case, you know, in case you need to tie something down. I've had to tie a few things down in the bed like when you're carrying stuff home. Um, we got a bag. I feel like a trash room. Once the uh, things, the little clips broke on it, I was just able to tie it to the back and keep it on there. Didn't have to worry about it. Um, if you ever change the belt on your truck, like this one, it's coming. Um, I usually change them every, I don't know, 75,000 miles on the belt. Just keep the old one. So if you do 
Blue the belt, you've got a spare that can at least probably get you home. Now, as long as you keep it out of the sun, it won't dry, it won't like uh, sun rot or get ruined. This one's still in okay shape. There's a couple little splits in the, the ribs, but for the most part, it's a good belt of the spare. Make sure you also have on your like on your, on your hood or you like, keep a diagram on your phone so you know how that belt goes on and take a picture before you take it off. Um, I carry this little inverter probably for you no know, real good reason. I already have an inverter in the truck. I guess this would be a good spare one that would quit working. Um, carry a bag of zip ties in case some wiring falls off or this thing's rubbing around or flopping around a lot. Good to have somebody break something that uh, you can often do zip tie it, hold it together. I just got some wireproof uh, wire connectors and wire connectors in here too. And then for my I have the scepter jerry cans, the military style ones, like just put this end on there and adapt and uh, fills up easily a few times. Um, so that's about it for our our tools and spares. So we'll put that stuff away. I'll uh, move on to the next one. All right, so the next bag we're going to take a look at, I've got a tire repair and uh, air compressor kit in here, in this bag here. So one thing I definitely keep in here is a tire pressure gauge. I've had this one for probably 15 years or more. Probably longer than that, maybe 20. Ever since like early 2000s, I've had that one. It goes up to about 70 PSI, 75 PSI. It works for my truck. Um, I've got another one in my truck for when I want to inflate up to about 80 pounds for towing my camper and other heavy stuff. So it's good to have a tire pressure gauge. Um, I've also got this ARB. Um, it's a tire ARB speedy seal puncture repair kit. So this thing, I had a bunch of like other kits and they were okay and all, but the ARB has a nice one. It's got the, the lubrication right here for your for, uh, uh, reaming out the hole with the tire and, then, and for putting in the plugs. So this is your plug kit right here that comes with it. And it comes with, man, just a ton of plugs as you can see for your tires so um, that should last you for at least like a few flat tires I would guess so that's the lube it also comes with um, comes with extra valve stems right here uh, you've got a valve stem seal here you've got the uh, valve stem itself the part that goes the valve that goes inside there you got like four of those and then you've got some caps for the valve stems as well to come with it should you need some of those um, comes with your installation tool right here it's pretty nice these are really nice they're all aluminum and heavy duty you don't have to worry about breaking them like you do with the plastic ones and that one as well they're really nice cool nice kit comes with a set of pliers and then i think this is a yeah just a little razor blade knife when you want to cut those off after you install them. Also has a tire pressure gauge. So this one goes up to 110 PSI. So I could probably, you know, I probably don't even need to carry that one. It's just, I guess, uh, extra crap I don't need. Even after doing this like a number of times, I still have crap in here. That's duplicates. Put that back. Instructions back in there. Pretty nice kit. It was one of the better ones I found on the market. So usually anything ARB is pretty high quality. Again, not sponsored by anybody here with this stuff. Um, I've just got some little repair patches here, some glue, another. I could probably chuck that. I don't need that one. Another tire pressure gauge. I've got. I bought a valve stem remover. That's a little bit nicer to use than the one that's in that kit. So keep that stuff in there. And this, this is actually a Harbor Freight Special right here. Um, this is my third compressor like this, and it's a, 
These things are actually really well made. I had one, let's see, I've had two on my old um, Land Rovers for airing down. And one of them I just hard mounted right into the, um, under the hood for years. And it would always work. It inflates your tires pretty fast. It's a high, high volume air compressor. High pressure goes up to 150 PSI, which is more than I'll ever need. You can usually take your tires from about 15 PSI to about 30 in a minute, minute and a half, something like that. Um, I've had great luck with these things. Um, it comes with a hose up here in this, this one. It's got a nice uh, stretchy hose with a gauge on it so you just watch it as you fill up right there. And all you get to do is screw that on your tire. It stays on there while it's uh, filling your tires up. And it'll reach a long ways. You've got about 10 foot of leads or more for the battery here. And then this hose will stretch at least 15 to 20 feet. I've had it stretch out pretty far. It works great. So should you get a flat or whatever, with, and then you can you can seal that puncture up with the kit, you can then fill up your tires with that air compressor and be on your way again. The nice thing about the air, air compressor is it just it comes with this uh, bag, which helps you store it real nice and neat too. And then it comes with some nice heavy duty battery clips. Yeah, you got a lot of lead there. I've only used this one a couple times so far, but it's been nice in a pinch when you're not at home. You need to fill a tire up. So that's, uh, that's our tire repair and air compressor bag right there. Pack that up and put it all back away. Show you the next bag. All right, our next bag is um, our recovery equipment. So this bag is actually kind of heavy. Got shackles and other crap in here. So let's take a look here. We got. Um, um, I've got a trusty old hydraulic jack from a Land Rover. <laughs> for uh, jacking up the axles and stuff. This thing actually has quite a bit of reach. It will go that tall. Um, it's a great bottle jack. I, I keep this on me all the time for changing tires. I don't trust the stock uh, jacks on these things at all. That are that scissor lift type. Those things are known to like, if you bump the truck, they'll just they'll kind of like cave in on themselves and break. Um, we've got a really old tree saver strap. I should probably replace this next. It is, geez, I can't remember the brand. Let me see if I can see. Oh, this is a T-Max. So this was made back in, geez, I want to say 2010 when I first bought this. I had a Jeep at the time. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's probably on its last leg right there. So we should probably replace that. I think I'll do that when I get home, buy a new one. Um, it's rated for up to... I think this one is good for, let's see here. Hmm. It says uh, 10 tons, so yeah, tree trunk pr protector rated for 10 tons. So this one would definitely hold the truck, even maybe a couple more trucks. My truck's only about 9,000 pounds, so that should hold my truck pretty easily. Let's throw that over here for now. Um, I always carry a lot of extra gloves. These are great for, these are just like basic cotton oil field gloves I have a lot of. Um, I've worked in the oil field for a very long time, so we got a lot of those. Uh, and we've got some leather gloves for like, if you've got steel winch cable, definitely use these. Um, I've got a 30 foot uh, toe strap. I think this one actually has a little bit of elasticity in, in it. Um, this one should be rated. Let's see if I can pull this out without wrecking everything. I don't remember what the rating is on it. I don't know. It was enough for my truck. I think it was like 30,000 pounds or something. I don't see the strap rating on it. Um, maybe that's a, not a good one to have. I don't know. It is a Smitty built. It did say. I think when I bought it, it did say 30,000 pounds, but 
that is a that is a concern right there i guess for me i'll I have to look that up and make sure it's going to be enough at least 10,000 pounds for my truck that's our our tow strap that's 30,000 pounds or that's a uh, 10,000 pounds there it's 30 feet long another thing we have in here got a bunch of shackles uh, so you can just hook your winch up to other vehicles or if somebody needs to pull doesn't have a very good uh, winch like a tow towing point tow hook point on their truck you can hook these up these are uh, rated for four and three quarter tons so just make sure you check your rating on everything you're using that it's gonna hold up to whatever you're using this one's only um good for two tons this is just a little guy i don't even know why i have it in there but it's not very sufficient and then we've got um uh, a block for our for the winch up front I've had this one for a long time too this is a t-max and it's rated for 8,000 kilograms so it's it's pretty good rating on that I think that's about 10,000 pounds on there if not more oh I can't do the metric conversion in my head right now I don't know what the conversion is um, so that's kind of our some of our recovery equipment right here um, good to have straps even like if the like if your winch cable isn't like long enough to reach something you can always un, unroll your uh, winch or your, your strap and hopefully reach a tree that's that's just out of reach of your winch cable so that's uh that's that in a nutshell um, cool thing about this uh, bumper i have on here too i have get this little compartment down here and when you got like dirty like, dirty uh, equipment and stuff you can just throw stuff in here I've got a couple shackles in here too just keep the pins in there this thing isn't steel from the elements but um, nothing can fall out of it it does keep everything in here pretty nice so we just keep these shackles in here I uh, don't know why it's just nice to have them there you could stick toe straps in there but they get all muddy and dirty so i just don't keep anything else in there mainly just metal items i'm sure that's probably meant for something else but i can't think of anything else to stick in there so why not put that crap in there right all right guys so we're going to go over some of the safety equipment we got here this is my safety equipment and first aid and this just has some more like survival crap in here. We'll go through some of that. Um, I've had this thing forever. This is I don't have, I couldn't fit it in this bag because it's so full. So we just I just use that bag to carry some of this stuff in here. In here we've got let's see, a couple survival some survival stuff. Let's get it out of here. All right, so in here, we've got a uh, little whistle, emergency whistle, it's never been opened. Um, lighter, I wonder if that even works anymore. Dead lighter, I don't know. That did work when I stuck it in there. <laughs> Probably uh, been bouncing around so much that uh, it's died. I guess we could always use a spark on that to try and start a fire. You got a little bit of steel wool. If you can't get a fire starter with a match, you can always take some of this on a battery post and get it to heat up real hot, start a flame. Uh, this is just some tissue paper. So you could use this to start a fire as well. So this is kind of my starting a fire <laughs> um, bag. And I don't even know what that is. I guess this is a plastic bag for fun. Who knows? Um, I keep a little like a spare knife in there uh, nothing too fancy just make sure if you got a knife keep it sharp it's a nice little way of just storing it keeping it keeping it sharp in there and then we've got some uh, waterproof safety matches these are a pain in the ass because they don't light very easy but they're waterproof and then I've just got another um, waterproof match container right there and I've got uh, some um, 
some of the stuff you strike it on. I don't know what they call that. The striking area on the matchbox. I just put that in there. So that's that bag in a nutshell. Oops. As you can see, the wind is still blowing. Okay. So this is our, another safety piece of safety equipment we carry is this um, fire extinguisher here. This one is in I can't remember if this is like an A, B, or C. It doesn't say on it. I think it's for all uh, all applications. It's for uh, gasoline, electrical, and uh, paper fires. So it's for paper, liquid, and electrical. So it's a good one to have. Always check your extinguisher. Make sure it's good to go. Make sure you know how to use one of these. You just gotta pull the pin out aim this at the base of your fire, aim the hose at the base of your fire and spray. If you've ever got an electrical or a fire in your engine bay, make sure you leave the hood closed and you just open it enough to get that in there. You want to keep all the oxygen out of that area. Oxygen is what helps the fire burn. You've already got fuel burning so you don't want to add any more oxygen to it. This is our, our big safety bag here where we've got a lot of matches in here. Got some light sticks, got another whistle. Um, these bags actually made, they hold food in them. Um, you should probably replace some of the stuff, even if it's kind of old now. Uh, it's got like hot chocolate, Kool Aid, chocolate, um, and some other kind of just basic food items to keep it alive for like about 72 hours in each one of those. Um, we've got a first aid kit here with like medications and just some other uh, like scissors and, and tape and stuff like that. Um, I've just got like a generic band-aid kit here as well. And then I've got like um, more of like an oil field or industrial safe like uh, first aid box here that has more items in it. Three, three of these might be a little too much, but I guess you can't be too safe, right? And then we just got some other items in here. These are, it's like a survival poncho in here. We've got a space blanket for keeping warm, emergency blanket. And then we've also got, uh, I guess, a emergency water bag. You can use this to like, catch rainwater and stuff. And then we've got an emergency poncho. This is another bl uh, blanket. These things are pretty small and lightweight, but if you need them, they're nice to have. I've never had to use one yet, but better than nothing, I suppose. We've also got in here, I've got this little portable stove set up right here. So should you need to cook anything, like boil water, you can just throw that on this uh, this thing. This thing should burn for like four days. Just a but butane um, cook cooking unit. I've used this a couple times. It, it actually uh, cooks your food pretty quickly. It boils water pretty quickly. It's not as fast like a jet boil, but for something cheap, just to throw in your backpack for like 50 bucks or in your kit for 50 bucks, great thing to have. Also we've got a flare, these are nice for starting fires, uh, also signaling people in an emergency. And I found more zip ties. I guess if you got a bigger issue than uh, what a normal zip tie will do, these will these will definitely cover you. Let's go over our emergency equipment, uh, first aid kits, this kind of stuff we like to carry just to make sure we're prepared. So that's that on that one. Next one we're going to go into is our our tool bag. Kind of show you some of the equipment we carry there and why we carry it. Go through that next. Okay, we're going to go through our final bag here of uh, off-road equipment. This is our tool bag. This is just an old DeWalt bag I've had forever. Everything seems to fit in here pretty good. Um, so some of the things I carry. I got this cobalt metric and standard uh, 
socket set. It's pretty basic, but it's got everything I need for my truck, except for like bigger things for like the axles. Um, stuff that if it broke and the broke while I was out four wheeling, I'd probably have called tow truck anyway. So I, I just got those sockets. Um, I got a bunch of random like pliers and electrical cutters. In here, we've got a small little magnetic light, it's like six bucks, and we've just got some double A batteries. You can just stick it on your on your vehicle, like that, and it'll stay up, but like that. Um, you can hang it. I'd hang it off this thing, but it's aluminum, so in case you didn't know, magnetics magnets don't work with uh, aluminum. <laughs> I think that'd be a basic school knowledge, but uh, well, some people don't get it. Um, I've got a bunch of different types of screwdrivers in my kit. Um, Phillips and flatheads, and then I've got a bunch of Torx screwdrivers. This truck has quite a bit of Torx uh, screws on it. Another thing that's good to have is an old mirror. Uh, this is for seeing in places you can't see normally. They're pretty handy to have if you got something that's hidden. Lots of different types of pliers and uh, wire cutters, you know, needle nose. We've got a small, just a crescent wrench. In case the, I have a bunch of metric wrenches as well, but this is nice if you need a backup and you can have double of that wrench. Uh, some vice grips are good. And then uh, on my truck, I've got. I've got uh, non-factory lug nuts in it nowadays. And so we use this thing. And this is my cheater bar. I actually got this in England for breaking free uh, tires, lug nuts, or wheel lug nuts. So it's uh, pretty handy. It locks and locks open. And all you gotta do is close it. There you go. Pretty handy. Got a nice, uh, got a little razor knife, razor blade knife. They're nice to have for cutting things. Some more wire strippers and a bunch of random like um, yeah, here's here's our socket for our lug our lug nut adapter. So yeah, basically if you need something, I can I can fix just about anything on the truck with my hand tools I've got right here. I feel like it's a pretty complete kit. Um, I guess I wish I could carry bigger stuff for like, I don't know, sway bar end lengths, but I guess if they're broken, it's not gonna impact the driving. I can just zip tie it out of the way. So that's our basic, basic uh, tool kit. You know, just stuff I've needed as I've been four wheeling for years. Um, great thing to do with your wrenches, you got like these kind of wrenches open end with a closed end on the other end just get an old carabiner take that and you can keep all your wrenches right together right there you don't have to worry about digging through your tool bag trying to find them with all the other crap you have around with the screwdrivers and the sockets and everything else so it's a pretty nice tool bag to have pretty nice way to carry all your tools and equipment like that that's that that's about everything that i carry on here other than uh like some water and fuel when i'm out a long ways away this is this will get you out of a pinch in a lot of situations so that's that's all you're looking to do if you got like a breakdown all you want to be able to you know you want to be able to just kind of get back up and then going so this will get you back up and going if you can repair it it's falling off or fix it or tighten it down so that's about that for right now. I don't really carry a whole lot of uh, spare parts. Actually, I don't carry any spare parts. Uh, the truck only has 30,000 miles on it. I don't carry any axle parts. They, you know, they're like one ton axles. If I'm breaking those with a 35, I've got some serious issues. If I, you know, I blow a U-joint. A lot of this stuff is just maintenance in my opinion. Like, I know you can break stuff. I've broken stuff before. I've broken a whole rear axle on my Range Rover. I was just coming out 
uh, of a trail in Moab and I was just crawling up some easy part and all of a sudden the back end, the back uh, diff just blows out and all I had were 33s on the truck. Um, and luckily I had a tow strap with me and my buddy pulled me out. I had front wheel drive still, but it wasn't enough to get me out. He was able to, to drag me out to, so I could get back on my trailer and, and tow the thing home. But when you're doing stuff, when you're out four wheeling, just be smart. If it looks like it might break your truck, if it looks like you might get stuck and there's nobody else around to help you out, be smart. Don't get stuck. Don't, uh, don't take a chance. You'll end up paying for it one way or another. All right, for the last bit of equipment we're gonna go over here, uh, I'm gonna talk about these. These are our ARB Tread Pro. So these are just like traction uh, boards. If you get stuck in sand or snow or mud, you can stick these under your tires and use them as a recovery. I've only got two of these right now. I haven't really got to try them out. I've never uh, really gotten stuck where I could try these out yet. I, I need to I need to do that. Just go get my back end buried and see what we can do to get ourselves out with these things and see how they, how well they work. Uh, there's other brands. Uh, these are ARB Traction Pros, and then there's the um, Max Trax brand. I those look like they work really well from the videos I've seen. I just I bought these ones because uh, they're ARB. Basically, I like ARB stuff. Um, and they seem to have pretty good uh, reviews from what I can see. The only reviews I've been able to find are like Australians using them. I think the Aussies love these things. You can see them like, some guys have like 10 of these things on top of their trucks when they're four wheeling. But uh, I just, I bought two, I'll probably buy another another set of them. They're supposed to be coming out with a little different design to have these uh, little lugs be replaceable. I know Max Trax just did that, so I guess we'll see what happens. If they uh, do that, I'll definitely order a pair of those and keep them in my truck too. Another item I carry, this flat nose shovel. It's good for digging sand and stuff out. I've used that a few times. I got stuck in a river. Luckily I had this with me and we had a lot of sand around, like the river was just sand on the bottom. I kind of just, my front end slipped in and uh, I was able to dig a lot of the sand out around the wheels and tires and and uh, with the help from the guy that came along winch myself back he had a little he was in a jeep jk two-door and he had a nine thousand pound winch and if it wouldn't have been for me being able to shovel all the crap out i don't know that we would have ever gotten out of that river we were nose deep in that river when my, when my front tire fell in uh, another good thing to have is of course uh like a hatchet this is just like a survival item um Good for chopping small trees if you need some firewood, um, breaking up some branches, stuff like that. You can use this end as a hammer, I guess if you need a hammer. But I've had this guy for years. It's a, I think it's an east wing, east wig, east wing, east wing, whatever. Uh, pretty nice little hatchet. I think it was like 70 bucks or something when I bought it, but it's got a nice metal handle so you don't have to worry about breaking it when you're. If you're bad at uh, chopping wood so <laughs> don't break your axe all right so that does it for this video hope you enjoyed it hope you got some information about stuff you should be carrying with you we'll go into some more details on other videos on tools and safety equipment this is just a quick rundown of the things we carry uh, hope you have a good day we'll see you another time